everyone. Drops Family Garden here. It's uh, April 27, 2020. I want to talk about salsify. Does anybody know what that is? Okay, so this is uh, where you can get some of it at True Leaf Market. They sell by the one ounce, the four ounce, and the one pound package. They probably don't need more than one ounce unless you're going to plant a field of these. So, well, salsify is um, also known as white salsify cold spread vegetable oyster and oyster plant. This uncommon root vegetable has a long tapering root and edible leaves. The cooked root is said to resemble the flavor of oysters. That's you. Throw them in your oyster soup, I guess. Sassify, I mean, sassify is planted from the seed in the early spring and harvested after the first hard freeze in the fall. Culture is a bit like parsnips. Adequate moisture and fertility during the growing season is necessary if high-quality roots are to be produced. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, do not put this in heavily rich soil with manure and stuff because you will get very bad roots. So, moving on to that, I want to make a point first, though. Um, I was watching somebody's garden video. I won't name any names, but they'd never heard about planting companion plants. Now, companion plants are very important because some are nitrogen takers and some of them are nitrogen providers. So you want to kind of max, max them up together when you've got a nitrogen producer and a nitrogen taker. So this chart right here will tell you what's a good companion plant for, um, like, beans. Any type of beans, maize, sunflower, lavender, cabbage, cucumber, strawberries, and I can't pronounce that. <laughs> Really bad for onions, garlic, and fennel. Don't put them in there next to your beans. So, for instance, um, one thing I do know is you put beans next to, like, cabbage. Um, that's really a good one, and, and lettuce and stuff like that. Same thing with your beets. You know, uh, you can pair them up with beans, onions, garlics. They don't seem to be too particular. Cabbage and uh, all kinds of herbs and stuff. So I'll leave this link in here for you because here's an ultimate chart for planting stuff. And it's huge. Trust me. This is a, a huge PDF. I'll open it up real quick. So it has all kinds of things. Legends right here. Companion. Antagonistic. Hmm. And it lists everything here. A lot more than a lot of charts I've seen. Um, you know, so you go from like... Apricot to apple, there's nothing there. Uh, apricot to basil, it likes basil around it. Likes asparagus, likes basil. So you can see how you can just you go across and you match it up with what you're looking at. Okay, enough of that said. Here's another thing on Wikipedia, uh, and it has more than just vegetables. It has herbs and um, flowers and stuff that grows well together so it's like you click on the herbs and stuff so i'll leave that link in there for you too but i know somebody was planting something next to something on a video and they don't like each other and that's something you don't do in your garden so you re really need to research this uh ultimate companion chart and read up more about companion plants for your plants that you're planting because if you just throw seeds in the ground you may have two nitrogen takers and you're going to have to really enrich the soil even more because they're both going to be eating the nitrogen you want to take her and you want her a giver. So keeping that in mind. Now what the heck is sassify? I mean sassify. Sassify sounds like something you do to tomatoes right before turning them into salsa. But this skinny vegetable has nothing to do with tomatoes or Mexican food. Instead sassify, announced, pronounced sassify, hails from the Mediterranean where the ancient Greeks and Romans harvested the roots for both food and medicine. Through the Middle Ages and up till the last century, this vegetable was a common sight in both Europe and the United States. However, with the invent of refrigeration, people started using vegetables that were more difficult to preserve, and once popular sassafi faded into obscurity. Now, they come in two varieties, black and white sassafi. Okay, and they have a oyster-like taste. We went through this part right here. Um, using sassafi, so how does one use or cook with sassafi? By the way, they like a cool area, and they don't like really rich soil, so that's one thing you need to keep in mind. So how does one cook, sass, w cook with sassafi? Centuries ago, this plant was 
saw some medical use for gallbladder and liver complaints. Black sassafy was sometimes called viper's grass because it was a popular remedy for snake bites. Today, sassafy can be used as a replacement for nearly any root crop, especially potatoes. Boil it, mash it, put it in your favorite soups and stews, or simply cube it in sauteed and butter with, with its greens. You can even use it in place of potatoes in au gratin or scalloped potato recipes. The best part of sassafy is it's much better for you than most starchy root vegetables. These simple roots can contain a lot of iron, vitamin C, thiamine, calcium, and phosphorus, and provide a healthy dose of fiber. They also have as much potassium as a banana. So if you need potassium, here's a superfood. All this earns them superfood status. This good for you vegetable tastes good too. Many claim that the sassafy tastes and, and a, lot, a little bit like oysters, which is one reason why it's called vegetable oyster. In truth, black sassafy has a mild oyster flavor that makes it perfect for chowder or mock oyster soup. White sassafy has somewhat different flavors similar to artichokes, hearts, and asparagus asparagus. Want to grow sassafy? Since finding sassafy in the grocery stores is often difficult, many people choose to simply grow it themselves, which is what Drop's doing this year. He's planted some of this and he's going to give it a try. He's going to be harvesting them in August or something. And growing sassafy is simple. These hardly plants are resistant to most diseases and pests do not pose a threat to them. The best time to plant sassafy is in early spring in an area that gets that get that gets snow and early autumn in the areas where snow does not fall. It takes about 100 to 120 days for each plant to reach harvesting size, and they prefer cool weather. Okay, so you plant these about four inches apart, and the rows you want to plant 12 to 16 inches apart. Sassafy prefers moderate to poor soil. Too much manure or compost will produce a poor quality roots. And when weeding, make sure that you don't inadvertently weed out your seeding sprouts since they look like grass. If you're harvesting these roots, you won't need to worry about preserving them. Sassafy doesn't can or freeze particularly well, and it does go limp relatively quick after being harvested. The best way and easiest way is to keep the roots in the ground until you're ready to use them. If you live in an area where the ground freezes during the winter, dig the sassafy roots right before the freeze. Then you can store them in a container of damp sand placed somewhere in the stakes that stays cool but not frozen like a root cellar or your garage. These days, yeah, they already went through the super fruit thing. But these are really nice and they give you a little recipe here. Find out how they taste. Pan roasted sassafy. You get sassafy roots, two tablespoons of Virgin olive oil, freshly chopped parsley. The the juice uh, of lemon is used to keep it from discoloring when you boil it. Kosher salt, fresh ground pepper, water for boiling. Cut off the tops and tips of each root and scrape the dark outer skin. Cut each root into smaller pieces about two inches long. Bring the water to boil with lemon juice. This prevents sassafy from dark darkening. Boil the pieces until tender, about 20 to 30 minutes. Drain and cool and slightly. Then cut the pieces in half lengthwise. Place an olive oil in a large saute pan under medium heat. Place the drained sassafy pieces in the olive oil with the salt and black pepper. Cook until golden brown, turning the pieces gently. Add fresh parsley and serve. So, this is pretty delicious and it was used before refrigeration um, in the old days. Now, I've got... A little prepper trip for you here. Let's think about if food gets really short because we're looking at a food shortage in this country and across the world. So you plant a bunch of these in spring and just let them grow. Leave them in the ground and um, let's say that things fall apart in society which you know that's what preppers prepare for and you need a ready food source. Well you got your decoy food because you're you're smart enough to hide your food in a underneath the house somewhere or in a false panel or in the wall somewhere because when people start getting hungry and there's no food, they're gonna come rob you. So you have your little stash of food for them to take, you know, because um, not everyone's gonna be able. Let's let's put it this way: you don't really don't want to hurt anybody. You don't have to. So if you get a large group of people come through your house and say we're gonna take everything you got, 
for food and you got nothing to say about it. If you do anything, where that gun ain't going to do you nothing. So, well, they take your stash food. You still hit on a bunch of food. But you know what? You're smiling as they walk away because you, notice, you know that you have these things sitting in the ground. And they have no clue that this is food, just like Jerusalem lottery chokes. Look into Jerusalem water chokes too, because that's another soup. That's another food they can grow on the ground. You can leave Jerusalem ark chokes in the ground all winter long, um, but when you do dig them up, they got to be used right away, like this sesame. So here's a super food you can grow and hide in plain sight, um, in case stuff does hit the fan. So not only I'm about gardening, I'm, I'm about survival and I'm about prepping, because that's very important. Um, if you're not planning ahead for food shortage and you think that you've got a bunch of food in your house and if things get really bad and people get really hungry they're not going to kick your door in, in groups and take your food you need to think again you've been warned